guys, welcome back to Hogwarts Park and this fun with flags episode. Because I'm building Hogsmeade and uh, it's basically me customizing buildings. And I know this is not the most exciting content. I was planning to do this with you guys on a live stream last week. Couldn't make it because I was too hungover from a birthday party, not my own, someone else's. And uh, yeah. Sorry for that, but we're doing a live stream this weekend on Saturday, probably maybe today or yesterday. Uh, go check out my community post to decide if we're going to build something in, Hogs uh, in Hogwarts or in All Lagoon Park. But now I'm starting with what I did in preparation for the stream that never happened, which is to turn this huge H into uh, like castle corridors. I figure we need some sort of castle and if we can't have one, at least I can turn this into path with melter walls around it and together, maybe probably in another live stream one day in the future, we can turn this into a fun area with lots of monuments for crazy wizard stuff <laughs> and castle things. Uh, secret passages, all sorts of stuff, but I had to put this there so I could work on Hogsmeade, the definitely definite form shape of Hogsmeade, because I wanted to be like uh, on the opposite side of the sleeping dragon, so on the other side of the H. So uh, lots of path. I wanted to show you real quick. Don't worry, because this is not the episode how I started to get uh, the space ready to build a Hogsmeade. And I'm trying to recreate the, the H from the crest that I chose to use as my template. And it has this embossed shape where there is a shadow side and a light side. The shadow side is black. The light side is red. So I decided to do the outline with the staff path, the darker one, uh, because I don't know why. <laughs> there used to be an explanation in my head, but those explanations tend to, you know, just sometimes be worth nothing, except for I can do what I want <laughs> right now and uh, yeah, find, a, fi find an explanation for it. But um, I forgot. So I colored this in with the black and red sort of washed out black and red path. No magic about it, just some fiddling and um, path stuff. I think this is pretty cool, especially, yeah, helps with keeping all the shapes that we want visible intact. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to turning this into a fun little space, maybe with connection points to different areas uh, via the flu network. And um, I think this can be fun. You know, some uh, exhibit space uh, for a ton of skeletons, knights, and wizard lore. So now that this is done, I can finally get to the Hogsmeade Town Square. And um, I'm doing another Celtic pattern, and it is the Tree of Worlds, or the Tree of Life, which stands for, uh, to be honest, I tried this path art thing, this pattern, uh, for the Hufflepuff common room. Uh, it turned out too big, but I found it was pretty easy to do. I just, I managed to do it uh, like at the first try perfectly, but this time I struggled. I don't know why. Um, it's not that complicated. I don't know what happened, but never mind. Uh, let me tell you something about the Tree of Worlds. It is the tree that connects the underworld world um, Valhalla um, with the world of the living and every other existing world there is and it represents life and death everything everyone coming together in this one never-ending circle of life <laughs> It's not a circle, but it's made of a lot of circles and it represents the tree. You can, you can look at it from every side. It's roots and uh, what is it called? Like the opposite, the crown of the tree um, is represented by all of these swirls and uh, loops. And um, yeah, I tried my best. 
I really like this shape. Um, I didn't find this particular execution of the symbol. Um, I sort of made my own, adapted some that I found, uh, but I stuck pretty close to one that I found and that I posted for my patrons at my Patreon. So if you guys are interested in um, all that sort of stuff, patterns I find that I look up and um, use for my parks, go check out my Patreon because I share them there and um, there are many more there to be found than the ones I end up using. So I don't know. If you're into that sort of stuff, you know where to go. <laughs> All right. And as you can see here is that I first tried, uh, I wanted this hogsmeade area to uh, be a mix, a, a hybrid between the great hall, that's why I put those elongated four tables in the center of this path art. Um, yeah, but later I decided that this uh, I didn't this didn't work for me, so um, deleted them later, and then started with the hog's head. Uh, this is the first thing that I, I knew I was going to build uh, or that I had an idea for because obviously it needs goats and we have goats in the game. So this was straightforward. I added a, a medium sized amenity. It's a, a drink bar thing. And um, then I added this goat pan. I had to press pause because... I didn't want free roaming goats in the park. I s already have some because of uh, several exhibits that I did where I had to release uh, goats or, or I released goats accidentally, didn't have a fence there yet. So there's free roaming goats here. Anyway, I didn't want to add any more. Um, so yeah, I fenced those in with the motor walls, gave them a little water trough and some trees. It was hard to put anything in there because of the stupid hitbox of the goat feeder. Struggled with the rocks, as you can see, but I wanted to have rocks in there because goats like to climb on things. So, you know, Aberforth Dumbledore is a weird person, but uh, he takes care of his goats. And uh, I'm not going into this any further. Um, this is all unsaid and unwritten things playing out in your head right now and mine. We don't need to say it out loud, but he wants them to have a nice home. I hope. I don't know. Whatever. So I gave them trees, a few rocks and put these bamboo poles there to, I don't know, secure the trees. Um, then I found this. A water container and had to add it there too you know pretty straightforward and after I was done with the goat pan I just added some path in front of the building and went on to the next one I'm going to come back to this uh, beautiful little goat bar we have and uh, do some things to it not much but I think it uh, you'll see there Oh, I did it now. I, I added the destroy thing because it's supposed to be a rundown place. It added the dust we need. It adds sparks, which I like um, because it's magic. And then I continued to um, lay down a path that is leading away from the center of Hogsmeade down towards the Gryffindor and Slytherin section. I wanted to sort of stay true to the Crestus shape, uh, but still be able to add two shops there. I had the idea of placing them like this next to the path that is leading towards uh, Gryffindor and, and Slytherin, uh, but changed that later. So I had to add this bit of a curve there, uh, it changes the shape of the crest a little bit, but that's okay. You know, that's uh, the amount of creative freedom I allow myself to uh, stray and wander from the original. Um, and right there, I realized that uh, I couldn't I couldn't live with this difference between the two paths, decoration of the walls. Uh, I wanted to have them both fit perfectly. So I adjusted the path again, added those walls, and I'm going to create a huge stair, stone staircase. Is this, what, what would you call this in English? Is it a staircase? Isn't a staircase something like 
uh, something else like in a house with wooden uh, base stuff. I don't know. Uh, stairs. I added. It's a long stairway. Stairway. <laughs> Neither to heaven nor to hell. It's just a stairway down to uh, the two house corners. And um, I was a bit inspired by Hogwarts Legacy because the train station, the Hogsmeade train train station, has um, has these alternating this alternating stairway. Uh, you'll see what I mean. And I kind of like that, you know, to not have just this straight path down the incline. But um, yeah, to add some interest and uh, another shape and a bit weird way of you to walk down. Is that English? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. And uh, I secured the different levels with the, uh, with the mortar walls to just, you know, give me some help with keeping those intact and then later replaced not replace them but move them so you know this is how it looks in the end and uh, now i decided to delete those buildings to delete the chairs and sink the terrain down i just didn't like the flatness of it you know especially talking about hogwarts legacy it's um hogsmeade and hogwarts legacy is sort of in a valley But there's terrain differences. You're always walking down or up some stairs and stuff. And I wanted to add those this feel to my Hogsmeade. So I added this uh, terrain elevation difference. Uh, it, 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 it made things more difficult for me than it was intended in the first place. Uh, but I managed. I managed to deal with it. You see, I have sort of established different heights for things to be in still struggling trying to find out how to how to do this <laughs> and just randomly placing buildings and um, hopefully as many as I can cram in there that was at least the intention I'm trying to figure out how deep I can go how I can do this and then I decided to get rid of this brown path in the middle and turn it into a garden that would make it much easier for me to uh, have this elevation difference going on and I'm um, just adding a bit of interest by you know recessing some path and the building try <laughs> I tried to add buildings in there Uh, didn't work just in this one space but it did some stuff with the terrain for some reason I didn't go back and uh, deleted the one other bathroom that I had placed in the center of this beautiful tree of worlds and adjusted the terrain for it all to be on the same level I didn't I don't know why maybe I thought this would give it some charm and <laughs> realness And uh, now I'm trying to incorporate this bunker. I decided to turn this into a magic plant shop later on because it has all these plants growing on it. Then I uh, added the bathrooms here. Um, I ended up not adding the beautiful mortar tree in front here because I decided that, you know, every Celtic dwelling needs its uh, town tree. And Hogwarts, uh, Hogwarts, um, uh, Hogsmeade has its own in um, Hogwarts Legacy. So I wanted, of course, the Malta tree to be that one very special tree of this dwelling. So um, I tried to not use it as much <laughs> as I usually do. And if I did, I sort of hid it. Not really hid it, but didn't put it in as prominently as the town tree. So now that I had placed like a decent amount of buildings, I started decorating and customizing. And this one you're seeing right here, which is to the left of the flu powder network connection thingy, I decided to turn into the three broomsticks. I added those water towers to be like butter beer barrels um kegs whatever the right word is here and um the beginning phase that you're witnessing right now of all of this customizing and decorating was uh, like i st i still was a uh, sort of warming up to the process and uh, broadening my mind 
to the different ways that I could use and the different items I could use to turn these buildings into something a little bit more fun than what they come with and how I could use certain decoration pieces to emphasize or to help uh, conveying what type of building, what type of shop I wanted this to be. Yeah, so I was still trying to find my my way around this particular build. So uh, for now, I'm just placing tables and chairs. And uh, um, yeah, what I mean, what else are you going to add to the three broomsticks? Sometimes I was a little bit lost. And how are you going to turn this into something magic? I didn't succeed every time. And uh, now I was lost. So I went over to Honey Dukes. <laughs> and... Um, here I decided uh, to go, I mean, I struggled with deciding, do I want the donut or the ice cream? I think the ice cream brings in more colors, but I liked the pink inside interior. So um, I went with the ice cream, even though as a symbol, the donut candy was probably more appropriate. Then I just, I, I tried to give it fun colors, matching the sign of the ice cream with the orange and, um, and stuff and, um, and, 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 and move away from the hot pink inside of the, of the building um, because I was planning to add another building, another shop, which is Madame Puddyfoot's uh, tea shop. Uh, that is known to be pink, all pink. Now I'm adding these amber decorations in front of the shop, giving them fun colors and pretending that they are some huge candy uh, that that you can lick. <laughs> oh my God. And of course, wizards do. I mean, muggles wouldn't because we had the pandemic. But I don't know. Okay, uh, I mean, there's not much talk for me about customizing buildings. So here it goes. I want to make this worth your while. So I almost started a podcast with my bestie to, you know, start a place where I could talk about all of these questions. Like, how did the community, the wizarding community deal with COVID? <laughs> Were they affected? Do they even know that something like viruses and bacteria and germs and whatever exist. I know they have a hospital. They have, <laughs> they have sent St. Mungo's for, uh, I think, magical maladies and injuries. But the, the key word is magical. Things like COVID, at least to my knowledge, aren't magical maladies. Do they exist for wizards? Are they immune to that sort of stuff? Do they get the, get the sniffles? Or, I mean, they have this pepper-up potion that they get when they have the sniffles, but I think it's some sort of different kind of sniffles. It's a magical sniffle variant. So are they even affected? Were they affected by COVID? Did they have a lockdown? Did they find a cure, maybe? And if they did, did they, like, okay, imagine... The wizarding community being affected by COVID, finding a potion that cures it. What's the procedure here? Are they going to contact, like, I don't know, the prime minister, tell him about the cure, share it with him so he could arrange? Or is there like a pro? <laughs> is there, do they have more portraits in different offices is there maybe a portrait in the who would they have gone there did they maybe is maybe the vaccine was it so controversial because it's actually not medicine but magic i like to ask myself questions like this and discuss them so if you have any sort of fun question regarding <laughs> the wizarding world and how they are dealing with muggle problems i mean there is the muggle secrecy act but it's impossible for them to just completely stay away from muggles so questions and i like that sort of question anyhow <laughs> after i had decorated the first little uh yeah garden nooks that i uh, decided those little cutouts from the path were going to be 
I uh, went on to this uh, Jurassic Park bathroom that is located here. Please ignore the fountain structure that I have placed there. It's going to go. It well, It's not permanent. Um, and I, would, I didn't know what shop I wanted this to be. But then I was like, okay, this is the main sort of the town square. Um, I need something impressive there. So I placed the T-Rex and then I knew it's going to be Brood and Peck, which is a magical creatures care shop. So um, I placed some cages and um, yeah, well, flags and some, some um, of these bamboo poles. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Um, yeah, I turned this into a little um, brood and pack uh, magical creatures shop. Um, spontaneously. Uh, this is the most detailed shop there is uh, in Hogsmeade. But with this shop, I started to add all sorts of clutter to my shops. Not all of them. The next one is uh, Pippin's Potions which is a shop that is never mentioned, I think, in the books. But in Hogwarts Legacy, I, in my memory, it was green. Uh, turns out I checked out some screenshots. Um, the building was not green. Uh, it's It has this beigey color and the door frame and stuff is has like this lilac color. Never mind. I thought it should be green. I chose this tea, herbal tea sign for the... the um, yeah, for the potions master, uh, I was torn between the the um, Korean barbecue because it has the flames and sort of a pot, but it has these great ladders that spell barbecue. Uh, so I couldn't, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't, I just cou I couldn't bring myself to do this. Uh, so I chose the tea, and it fits with the green that I had memorized for the shop. Uh, um, in my memory, it was green, so I gave it green <laughs> colors. Okay, okay, stop repeating yourself. Then I was like, what else is liquid? What else implies liquid? And I found this um, emergency, no, it's not this maintenance shed thing. Um, put it to the three broomsticks. Mm, because, yeah, it looks like something a brewery could use. Uh, and, um, yeah, hopped back and forth now i'm with the three broomsticks again mm, deleting things adding things look making it look nice added barrels here uh, i tried to you know place these decorations in a way that you see the barrels in front but not all the utilitarian other stuff that is connected to them so that it looks as if you know this is um, where they keep their barrels and uh, storage, storage area. Then I went back to Mr. Pippin and his potions store. Um, I added this one ember feature to pretend it's like a fireplace where you would put a cauldron. I don't have anything, which is very sad, that uh, it remotely resembles a cauldron, so I couldn't place any. I would have loved to. But I decided on these uh, amber features instead to imply some sort of weird fireplaces. Changed the lights to green, except for the, the ambers, so they look like fire things. And then I think I went on to a dying Jehelopterist. <laughs> No, I went on to this uh, magical plant shop. I don't think any of them was ever mentioned in any of the books, but there are two in Hogwarts Legacy. One is the Magic Neep, um, where you can buy seeds for uh, potions ingredients that are can be grown. And there is another one that is called Dogweed and Deathcap. And I like that name, so this is what it is. Um, where you can buy all sorts of dangerous plants like um, mandrakes and um, what is it, Chinese chomping cabbages and uh, venomous tentaculas and that sort of stuff. <laughs> 
So I placed these plants in front. I, I mean, I just put a ton of plants there um, to pretend that they are something special, uh, magic. And these are supposed to be mandrakes. They are quite old. And I'm going to put potted mandrakes there. This olive tree is supposed to be venomous tentacular. Or maybe the um, the J plant or whatever it is, is a venomous tentacular. Uh, you know, whatever. Then I put these uh, small things in pots because people are supposed to buy plants in pots here. Um and these are now um, the little mandrakes that you can buy. They're pre probably not, uh, they're juveniles. They're not, uh, <laughs> not adolescent yet. Uh, pretty small. Um, that sort of stuff. So, uh, you know, all kinds of funny looking plants that don't seem to fit into the biome, which is um, sort of the magic... <laughs> ingredient for this shop to just place plants that don't, don't belong into this biome. Um, this is the only way I could think of um, to turn them into magic plants. Of course, we need some dung, a fertilizer, and uh, you can buy it here. There's three different kinds. Uh, they all look the same, but they are very different. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Um, bamboo poles, of course, you can always use these poles to, I don't know, attach plants to them so they grow in the right direction. Some more potted plants, they are something else, maybe shrivel figs. Um, you know, you don't, this is not, this is a combination of the magic neep where you buy the useful potion plants and, uh, pretty plants and, um, Plants that you can use in fights if you want to. So, and this uh, little canopy I added here with these um, sun protection thingies. Uh, I should, I, I, they kind of look like something you would put, like a tent you would put over um, a field or a, a patch of um, plant hedge <laughs> to protect them from the sun. Sadly, I couldn't put any pots under there. Um, but I didn't feel like moving them, so I could. I was just, it's just an illusion. Illusions have to happen here a lot. So now um, I'm just adding trees to make it look nice. And um, colored the lights. Nothing too fancy, just green lights and uh, these flags I, I left them orange the two flags with the near the dung uh, the fertilizer are orange too and now we're doing junk <laughs> Zonko's joke shop I tried to glitch this one I wanted to add Mr. DNA in front of it I was quite indecisive how to customize it uh, there's a lot of this <laughs> I ended up with no decorations in front and these um, these uh, weird metallic triangles tried to give it because Jonko, uh, Jonko's, Zonko's joke shop is red, red and I thought yellow. But this immediately, I don't know, whenever I do this combination uh, in this game with these buildings, I think McDonald's and I didn't like this. So I adjusted the colors a bit to fit more with the sign, turned the red into a more pinkish magenta bubble gummy color and made the yellow a bit more orange. And... Um, that's enough to get it away from the McDonald's feel I get from it. So I tried, as I said, glitching things in front of it. Um, I added a ton of flags. And I wanted to add Mr. DNA, but Mr. DNA does not obey to the terrain. He has his own rules. So, uh, which I didn't, I didn't realize, but I'm going to realize pretty soon um put all sorts of stuff in front this is i don't know i struggled with this building with this shop i wanted it to look like fun and whimsical but there's not much i can do with this game to turn this 
to turn this shop into fun and whimsical things. So in the end, I worked a lot with lighting colors, put my DNA in a couple of spaces and uh, just left the flags there and the game crashed. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, just left the flags there, got rid of these sun screens that are there and then um, yeah nothing too spectacular and now I don't know what to talk about anymore so maybe just a little bit of music until I'm done with this and heading over to the next shop So there you go, this is what I ended up with. Some crazy colors, fun colors, Mr. DNA, the banner. Uh, I know it's <laughs> it doesn't say Zonko's why can I I can't pronounce his name? Zonko's joke shop. Now we're doing Ma Madame Puttyfoot's tea shop, aka the place where happy couples go to die. <laughs> place it's the place harry goes to in the book with cho uh, and where she keeps crying all the time everyone everyone thinks like he's super mean to her breaking up in front of everyone while Ginny's snogging with g uh jean dean <laughs> or seamus i don't know who didn't she snog with Anyways, um, yeah, so I added a ton of plants because it's that is supposed to how it looks. It's basically the equivalent of Dolores Umbridge's hideous pink. I mean, I love pink, you know, this hideous and I love cats, but her, her office 
in Hogwarts that is completely in pink with these kitten plates on the walls. It's hideous and this is how this shop is supposed to look but I don't have kittens that I can place everywhere so I used flowers and pink lights and um, this is and like you know lilac colors for the decoration and this lovely shade of Barbie pink for the shop. This is how it looks. I crammed in as many plants, uh, flowers as I could. Thankfully, they have the right color for this shop to um, really make it look like every couple's nightmare. <laughs> so there it is. People like it. It's crammed in there. I don't know why. Um, what did I do then? I started adding vegetation. This is so uninspiring. But I mean, what else? I, sh I planted some trees, you know, doing things for the climate. Plant a tree every now and then. Um, add some nature. Uh, yeah. There you go, Pippins has a backdrop of flowers and plants. And now what am I doing? Glad Rags Wizard Wear. Uh, it's a bit inspired by Hogwarts Legacy. Again, because his building is also in lilac colors, but this is a color that is pretty dominant in this game in Hogsmeade and I didn't want this, so I made it baby blue. There you go. And um, added some, some pinkish tones uh, with lighting. And as a decorational, decorational, it's an interesting word, uh, color, I made the roof burgundy red to, you know, to underline the, uh, the uh, exalted position this renowned house has of uh, their fantastic wizard wear. And as an accent color, I chose something along the lines of gold brassy, you know, to do the same thing. And then, as I said, I added lights and just some flowers in front of it. You know, it's not, it's nothing, it's, it's a special place. It has a style. It's not putting a ton of crap in front of it. It is surrounded by nature and some lovely arrangements of flowers and some tasteful lighting. But otherwise, Mr. Gladrex doesn't care for griblies and doozies and doozies. <laughs> My God, okay, whatever. So, you know, some final touches now with nature again. And then I went over to um, check the view from the Flu Network house. This, by the way, is a weird little space. I don't know what to do with it. And I ended up deleting it later. So I checked the view and decided that I don't want it to be obstructing the view onto the plaza, onto the, not the plaza, but the you know, the town square. Uh, so I decided to try and work with these planters and I placed them as you saw before, but this is sort of what I'm uh, continuing now and later on, to place them on a, one of these terrain contour lines, uh, which makes them sink into the ground. And so they're lower and you can look over them. And I kind of like the effect for here. And um, then I tried uh, to do anything to those benches with the same technique using these 
planters and to not make it too high. I didn't like the tree. I did like the trees there for the benches, but not for the view. So um, I had to find something else, something tall. I like to have something tall behind my benches, but not too tall. And I ended up to sort of build like a like a frame with these wooden planters and put the little olive tree the little malta olive tree inside and that kind of works it has it ga it gives you like i don't know a foundational structure for this bench arrangement that everything evolves around but is not too tall and makes sense it's kind of cute you know that sort of stuff There you go. Now, you know, the view isn't as obstructed as it was before. Much better. It looks kind of cute with all the flowers. This needed like some bushes and then that's all. And then I decided to make this little restroom next to, to the three broomsticks and the flu network, turn it into Ollivanders because they have um, a store in Hogsmeade too. So I put an olive tree there because of Ollivanders. No, actually because he's making ones uh, out of trees and this tree looks the most like a magical tree, a gnarly tree where um, these magic creatures that are living in trees that are fit for wand making are living in. Uh, what is it what are they? Boat truckles, maybe? I don't know. I think boat truckles are something else. Um, fairies, maybe? Who knows? Uh, and uh, yeah, I wasn't, I didn't. Olivander is one of those shops who doesn't have much decoration. I turned it into a, um, uh, uh, I used the destruction, uh, cosmetic destruction thing here. Because, you know, it's always described as this dusty old very ancient building there are some sparks flying off it which is also fitting for the whole wand thing you don't see them because they're in the back but i like the you know the dust falling from the roof so yeah i added these lights uh, to give it a mysterious air uh, turn them into uh, the grayish blue. It gives a feeling of, like Mr. Ollivander, you, you don't really, you never really know what this guy, on which side he's on. He, 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 he's a, you never know if you can trust him, you know? And this color is sort of gave me the feeling of, is this a safe place or not? It doesn't look dangerous or anything but it's not warming it's not a welcoming color so yeah uh, that's why i chose it and now i'm working on derwish and bangs which is a shop that is uh that doesn't exist or maybe it does but it doesn't play a role in hogwarts legacy but it exists in the books and it's a basic it's a repair shop where you bring your magic contraptions that are malfunctioning or broken or anything and they will fix it so of course i put all these Malta uh, repair, uh, like, yeah, this Malta stuff there so that it looks like a, a workplace. There's not much more to say about this shop, except for I didn't even change the lighting colors. I didn't add any more lights because the Malta things are, do have lights on them and it, yeah, it just looks fine and uh, fitting to what it is without me adding any crazy colors but this is just a workshop and it looks like it without me changing anything and now i'm really out of things to talk about <laughs> about this build 
But yeah, that's it. Uh, now I'm doing nature again. And uh, I think this is the perfect time for me to shut up again. So I will.
so after some adjustments to broods and pack uh, or brood and packs um, I added and the and the and the town fountain that is special I decided to turn this bathroom next to Honeydukes into Spind Witch's Sporting Needs, which is a shop that um, ha that uh, is known from Hogwarts Legacy. Never heard of it before, but that's okay. And you can buy brooms and all sorts of sporting equipment there. So I added this uh, this little martyr tower and um, these the surveillance thing to sort of fake. Um, a higher and elevated access. I, I'm later trying. I always try to put things in this Malta tower uh, because I always I don't want to I don't want to accept that you can't put anything in there. I want to put trees in there, and I want to put the aviary perch in there to this to turn this into a landing platform. But I couldn't. Um, the only thing that makes this special uh, is the lighting colors and lots of bamboo poles, which is probably where you're going to put your brooms. Um, or they are pr maybe going to be turned into brooms. I don't know. It's wood. It's sticky. So, <laughs> so it fits the most with a broom shop. So yeah, flags, lighting colors, and I added the perch um, for the for the flying reptiles as a pretend uh, landing platform next to it. Here I try to put it in through the tower, which would have been perfect, but impossible. So this is what it turns out to be: nature to make to round up the look. Some rocks, bushes, and um, yeah, nothing too fancy. But it's cluttered and uh, it's stuffed, so it's okay. I mean, it's okay. We know what it is supposed to be. This is the best I felt I could do to achieve the illusion of this being a broom sport shop need thing. Now I'm adding more trees to round up the look of the entirety of this dwelling. Much more nature. So basically finishing touches.
And there we go. This is Hogsmeade. For now, I'm planning to extend it. Uh, I have had the suggestion. I do have trouble with this word. I, <laughs> I got the suggestion from Jurassic Canon King too add the Forbidden Forest and the Shrieking Shack, so I will. And I think if you guys want to, we could add a couple more fun little stores in the upcoming live stream. Hopefully today, I don't know when this video releases, hopefully today, unless you guys voted for Lagoon Park, which at this point is a toss up. 68 people voted, it is 50-50. I don't know what to do. I guess I'm going to ask my patrons, um, what to do if it stays like this but um just so you know i'm planning on it extending this dwelling and this basically big shopping section of the park and this is it guys i'm so sorry for this very unspectacular content it had to happen at some time there's more of this type of stuff coming up probably in live streams but i wanted to do this now i hope you still liked it and I hope to see you in the stream. Leave me a like, suggestions for what to add next, how, what I could add to Hogsmeade, what I could add to the park. And stay tuned, stay inspired. Bye-bye.